Welcome to a very different special rendition of the Other People Podcast. Today, I am joined by my good friend, Quick Kick. Hey. And joining us today, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how well familiar you may be with a little video game website uh, known as Rage Select. But joining us today, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Jason Murphy. Hello, Cretans. Yes, uh, all one people that may or may not be listening. Who knows? Uh, so this is uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a while. And to be perfectly honest, I'm surprised you even said yes. Really? Uh, Why? Well, I came is... on here to destroy you. So let's get that out of the way, okay? You you underrated piece of shit. Who do you think you are? <laughs> so, I'm this, Jason Murphy, motherfucker. God. This I conversation. Just time for that. This conversation is giving me flashbacks, man. It's just all this all this bashing is like, wait, is this Jeff on the line? Who am I talking to? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, if anything, uh, I'm Nick uh, on here. If uh, if that's really what it's gonna come to. You fucking useless cum stain. No, 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 no. That's terrible. That's terrible. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, um, I mean, for like the longest time now, uh, my buddy Andy and I, uh, when we first started doing this, it was, you know, I mean, I've wanted to do a podcast for a long time. And, uh, and I mean, we've been doing this for over a year, but a lot of our feedback has been minimal to nothing. So, uh you know, um, of course, I take that into account. Like, well, you're not very well known on YouTube. I'm still incredibly small. Uh, you know, and so there was that factor. And I just figured, well, and, and I've wanted to try to stretch out to try and do new things such as uh, like some kind of interviews uh, or anything like that. Uh, and I figured like, well, I have spoken to you on a few occasions um and i figured well you could give it a shot i mean at worst they'll say well i'd like to but i'm really busy so well we were yeah yeah, yeah you were uh, fortunately flexible say i'm yeah. uh, uh pretty busy but uh yeah finally uh, i'm glad we were able to make it happen um as far as your numbers go you should try sucking less uh <laughs> Try to do an entertaining podcast. I think that's what Aww. people are looking for, to be entertained. Uh, now, there, there's so many podcasts out there. It's uh, it's yeah. tough. It's just there's so much white noise, you know. And I think you see that's just kind of the thing with the Internet, whether you're putting up videos or coming up with uh, a, a really, you know, if you're, if you're just doing like short films or if you have a, a great podcast or whatever, uh, it, it no matter how good it is, it might just languish and never get seen or heard or anything like that because there's a new video of some redneck getting hit in the balls with the recoil from a shotgun or a, yes. a cat video or something like that. It's you really, I mean, you know, quality is certainly not completely out of the equation, but a lot of it is kind of luck and just hitting at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, also, having a, a very um, established uh, fan base uh, will certainly ha- uh, will certainly help uh, as well, and not to mention having your own website a- as well to say like, "Hey, uh, we got all these other great people here. We're doing all these other uh, uh, great and different things, be it uh, you know movie reviews, uh, you know, and various different podcasts, and then video game things." Which brings me to. Uh, how I initially discovered Mr. Jason Murphy. I mean, I was talking uh, to Quick Kick uh, about this uh, as well. Um, I first came to Spill uh, originally from their YouTube page, where I just, I don't even remember how I stumbled upon them. I guess, you know, just looking around for some random uh, movie reviews and, and such, and I found them and then found their website. And then Spill started doing... Uh, the loading bar stuff. 
Uh, yes. Uh, and, and then the very early Let's Plays. And then I forget which review or podcast it was that I uh, initially listened to. It, it was either your review of Duke Nukem Forever or uh, one of the Mortal Kombats or probably even Deus Ex. Uh, but, uh, my initial response, uh, to when I first heard of Mr. Jason Murphy, uh, I remember after maybe a few episodes thinking like, man, this guy's a fucking asshole, <laughs> but, but he's pretty goddamn funny though. So I've heard that a couple of times before I've, I've, yes. I've heard that I can be somewhat abrasive, uh, quick kick we're. Were you in the vicinity the other night when I was yelling at those women at the highball? Uh, I believe I was. Yeah, that got a little <laughs> nasty. Um, apparently, and we didn't know this, while my <laughs> my yelling at them was totally justified, uh, and I didn't even realize it. I thought I was just being an abrasive prick. But no, they were actually screaming horrible things at Allison at wow. the moment that I was screaming horrible things at them. Mm. So yes, so it was... I've, I've heard I can, I can be a little caustic. Now well, were, were these, I'm sorry. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. These are the same Coke heads that were doing cartwheels around the dance floor. Oh no, no, no. Those were fine. These were the, uh, uh, shriveled whore bag, uh, soccer moms that were up on stage singing. Happy oh, birthday. With the birthday party. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yep, and they left a, a nasty little letter for Allison, so I feel totally justified telling them that I could smell the dust coming out of their shriveled up uteruses. Well, it, you know that's okay because one of them just kind of looked at me from off stage and said, "Hello, kitties, welcome to the show tonight." <laughs> Boils and ghouls. <laughs> you know, you do. Uh, you know, you do manage to paint such a very. Uh, a very beautiful and colorful picture of that, Mr. Murphy. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for that. Um, You're quite welcome. But, um, but yeah, uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, after, uh, you know, all the, uh, you know, shenanigans uh, and such, uh, you know, would break down. Um, and, you know, and of course, after the realization, like, oh, well, that's, that's not really who he is. Uh, that's just, you know, this character that he likes to play up, uh, you know, for when, you know, he is, uh, you know, recording and such things that, like that. Uh, you know, because it did obviously become very apparent that like, oh, well, it's not just for entertainment, but you do obviously know a lot about what you're talking about. Uh, at times, maybe not so much as uh, Jeff, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, you know, a lot of that just comes from, uh, being uh, a video game nerd since since pretty much the popularization, definitely since the popularization of home video games. Uh, you know, I think the first game I saw was like, it was this motorcycle game, and the name of it is escaping me right now. I posted it on my Facebook page not too long ago, but I saw it at a carnival, and I was just like, it's like a TV that you can control it with with the motorcycle handles? And it just blew my mind. And so my uncle, he uh, he would take me around to like, in this small, small town that I grew up in, he would take me around to different convenience stores uh, during like the the real birth of arcade games when they started to become prevalent and, um, and, and you know, prevalent enough for my small town to get them. And, you know, played a lot of uh, Galaga and Frogger and Donkey Kong and all the all the originals and stuff like that. Um, and then got, uh, like an Atari 2600. And ever since then, you know, it's just been with the exception of the brief period right after the, uh, video game crash in the eighties, mm. uh, right. Uh, with the exception of that, uh, just been playing games like nonstop. So Jeff eats, Jeff's my, uh, Jeff's the guy that runs rage select. Um, and, uh, he, uh, just eats, sleeps and breathes everything uh video games it's working non-stop you know and i i like to play uh and play quite a bit i make sure to you know i don't play video games every day because they don't have time but uh yeah. just about you know i'll have get some type of gaming in but uh but yeah jeff's the real uh powerhouse of knowledge because he reads all the news sites all day every day plays 
just about every major release that comes out and a lot of the minor ones. Um, mm-hmm. But like even this weekend, you know, I was saying that we a uh, bunch of us uh, spent some time at this uh, this cabin out in the woods and uh, uh, it had a, a decent Wi-Fi signal. And sure enough, you'd look over and Jeff was working and everyone else would be hanging out uh, and talking and drinking and playing Cards Against Humanity. And then you look over and uh, Jeff is playing Resident Evil Revelations 2. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually uh, checked out uh, the demo for that uh, just last night and was a little bit surprised that it's an episodic yeah. game, too. Yeah. Okay, this is becoming like too much of a thing, and suddenly now Capcom is... Yep. It's, it's really strange because um, it's episodic, but yep. the game is already done. So I don't yeah. understand... I don't understand what the appeal is for them or the audience uh, doing that. Maybe, you know, maybe if kids have an allowance or something like that, can only spend $6 a week because I think they're coming out weekly and they're like really cheap and will amount to a full game by the time you get it. But yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's, uh, it's strange. I don't understand the, uh, the allure to uh, selling something like that. Yeah. Well, and part of the other thing about it becomes – it's Capcom, and for the last couple of years, Capcom has had, you know, really, really kind of shady shit. Uh, you know, been some, uh, they've made some decisions. questionable decisions. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you know, I, and like after I initially finished it, I mean, hell, I mean, I was even a little bit worried, like, uh, you know, because I just finished doing uh, another uh, episodic game which I liked so much so that I know a shit ton of people have already recommended you and Allison play it. Uh, <laughs> but, but, um, uh, you know, and so I wonder like, is this going to be exactly like that? Well, no, I mean, it is still very resident evil. It's just episodic, which makes me question like, why are you doing an episodic game? Uh, is it so that it's, um, you know, maybe a little bit smaller, it's not so cost-effective, and you can get it out there a little bit faster, but it'll be in smaller increments, and you'll only pay about $6 for, for each episode. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. it's really weird. I mean, I can understand it. And again, I haven't played the game, so I don't really, uh, I can't really say how it plays out. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, does it seem like the episodic nature of it is forced upon the framework of a, of a, uh, of a, Resident Evil game because I can understand it with the Telltale games, yeah. but with this, it's like, are you just like rolling out levels? What you know? What are you doing here? Uh, well, the demo I finished it in like fifteen minutes, uh, and it starts you at like the very end of the episode, which was especially weird. Uh, you know, because you'd think like, well, any good proper, at least the last um, episodic demo game that I played, it started you from the very beginning, you know, and just kind of doled out oh like here's the story here's the character here's this interesting uh time play mechanic that you have uh for resident evil it is still very resident evil i mean it's a third person uh shooter uh and you have a secondary character who you can switch to and also have a co-op person control um which is kind of interesting uh i'm i mean i wasn't too sure uh you know because capcom is you know been kind of shitty to their own customers lately uh i i think i would want to come back to it later uh more especially if i could have a second person uh right oh yeah because yeah i heard that you can uh play cooperatively like that and yes. uh, have someone distract the zombie while you come while your partner comes up uh, behind them or what have you yeah yeah um so who knows uh we'll We'll see. Uh, so, uh, and let's move on here because um, I do have a, uh, hopefully, a, a, at least an interesting list uh, of questions for you, sir. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, and I'm sure you probably have heard these a thousand times. But uh, mostly, um, I'm just curious as to know, uh, how did you uh, get started or even introduced to uh the real deal and spill uh and leog itself yeah well um 
Okay, so for those of you listening who don't know, and most of you listening probably already know, uh, but uh, uh, there was a website. Uh, it uh, is now defunct as of like a, a little over a year, I guess. Uh, it's called Spill.com. It's owned by Hollywood.com. Uh, they made the decision to shut it down. Um, but before that, it was the, the project uh, mainly uh, was a bunch of uh, film fans. Uh, my friend Jeff and I did most of the video game reviews on it, but it was run by a gentleman named uh, Corey Coleman, who is now over on Double Toasted uh, doing a new thing that he is the uh, the sole proprietor on, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, but, but yeah, a um, long time ago, back in... Let's see, 1998, something like that. I moved to Austin, uh, fresh out of college, and um, didn't really know a lot of people here. Had a couple of friends, um, but uh, met like uh, one of my buddies. His roommate uh, had seen this local public access show. Uh, it was called The Real Deal. And it was just a, a couple of guys uh, about my age. Uh, uh, a rotating cast, but a couple of stalwart uh, members, Corey and uh, Martin and Tony, uh, mostly. And uh, I started, we started going down there on Wednesday nights and watching their uh, live filming uh, as they broadcasted it. And they would just talk movies and it was really funny and a great time. And, you know, they were very uh, accepting of everyone. And, you know, it was just uh, anybody who wanted to come and hang out, come and hang out. And then afterwards, uh, every Wednesday night, uh, they would go to a particular bar and usually shut the bar down, <laughs> usually close it down after the show. Uh, and that was every Wednesday. And they had been doing this for a long time. My buddy and I, uh, this well, this guy I barely knew, we uh, started, uh, uh, go, we went up there once. And uh, this is my friend Jay. I think we went up there once, maybe twice. And then one night Jay said, oh, I, I, I can't make it, but hey, my brother wants to go. And... Uh, that was uh, Brian Brushwood. And I was like, Mr. okay. Brushwood. Yeah, yeah. Brian Brushwood of uh, Scam School on YouTube. Um, and uh, Hacking the System, it's a little TV thing. Um, yes. We, uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, Brian and I started going up there. And then, uh, you know, Brian, he, he went uh, uh, somewhat frequently. But I started going all the time. And that's where I met uh, Corey and Martin and Tony first. And then shortly after that, although they will dispute it and they're wrong, Shortly after that, uh, Cargill and Chris were added uh, to their roster, and I was I was just a, I was just a fan. I was just hanging out, drinking with them, and everything. But I got to know those guys and everything, and uh, would hang out with them, and what have you. Um, and then uh, the real deal ended. Corey started up with those guys. Started up Spill dot com, and. Uh, Chris started up a podcast called The League of Extremely Ordinary Gentlemen, which was really just a geek and pop culture thing that would run on and on drunkenly for hours. And that went on for a couple of years and with, uh, with a rotating roster and everything. And once I departed uh, the Leog, Corey contacted me and said, hey, uh, we're going to start doing this video game thing. Do you want to be on it? And so I did that. And... Uh, yeah, we, uh, I was doing that for a while, uh, and it, you know, it was called the Loading Bar. Uh, it was me and uh, Kevin Baird of Video Game News, and Corey, and uh, then we brought. Uh, he was an animator at Spill at the time. We brought in uh, uh, Jeff, and Jeff knew more about video games than all of us, and he really just decided to uh, up the game no pun intended, and add a lot more quality into uh, the show. And we started doing, uh, outside of our reviews and podcasts, we started doing Let's Plays, like, all the time. And uh, and then, due to uh, financial difficulties, um, Corey uh, was faced with some choices to uh, eliminate a couple of the things on uh, Spill. Mm. And he axed the loading bar. And a couple of other things. So, uh, and had to had to get rid of a couple of contributors and stuff like that. Dark times, dark times. Uh, and so we uh, uh, we said, oh, you know, we're really enjoying this. Uh, you know, we want to we want to keep doing it. And we couldn't call it the loading bar, of course, because you know we didn't own it. It was owned by uh, Hollywood.com, 
So we couldn't use any of that, but we still thought we had a pretty good formula. And so it's like, you know, let's, let's keep doing kind of what we're doing, but mix it up a little bit and, and uh, we'll do it with more freedom. And, uh, Jeff had the idea to get the puppets made. We had those professionally made, uh, which we do the intros and outros for all of our Let's Plays using uh, puppet uh, likenesses <laughs> of ourselves. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, we started uh, Rage Select, uh, and it's coming up on like two years, I think. So we've been doing this for, I think, a little over three years, but Rage Select's been uh, uh, going for about two years. And since then, Spill has uh, been a breeding ground. Uh, for all sorts of uh, different podcasts and entertainment from all these great people. Um, you know, Corey has gone off uh, and done Double Toasted, and you can see uh, Martin Thomas on there with him quite a bit. Um, and uh, Chris Cox and Brian Salisbury uh, went off and formed One of Us, which is really, you know, a geek hub, cultureoneofus.net. So you've got uh, you know, Chris Cox and Corey and Bo, um on there and uh yeah all sorts of other uh community contributed things and other shows that they've picked up so they've got they've got a just an amazing amount of content and then we've got rage select uh where we do um um at least one 30 minute video every day along with a mm -hmm. podcast i think they're doing i think they're probably doing live streaming like right now as we're recording this um i recently uh, uh, wrapping up uh, oh okay right now yeah with uh, kayla who used to be on Leog and uh john sitton and uh jeff uh but yeah uh we you know we were doing that uh quite a bit and it was uh it was exhausting for me so i had to back yeah. away uh several months ago and so i'm not on there as much anymore uh but i still do uh, i'm still on the podcast once a month and i still do uh a let's play once a month mm -hmm. and uh yeah it's uh it's I'm not on there as much, but it has uh, uh, re rekindled my love of video games. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> when I'm because there was a point where Jeff was like, "Hey, Jason, what uh, games are you looking forward to? What's the the game you saw at E3 that you're most forward looking uh, most looking forward to?" Nothing, Jeff. I just I don't I don't care. I don't uh, care. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Fuck you. Yeah. Fuck video games. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. It was a drag. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, now that I've backed away and don't play as much, I'm like, I'll go over to Jeff's. I'm like, hey, I want to, I want to borrow this, and I want to borrow this. <laughs> and so now I'm, I'm actually playing games recreationally, which as, whereas while I was, uh, whereas before when I was recording all the time, there was no recreational gaming. It was mm. all for review. It was all, you know, spending four or five days a week at Jeff's recording stuff for Raid Select, and it just sucked all the joy out of it. Somehow, Jeff yeah. still going strong. Me, not so much. <laughs> yeah, um, and that can be um, a real drag uh, when you're, uh, when all you're doing is, oh well, I only want to play this game if I'm going to record it, and I've gotten to a really bad habit uh, about that for quite a while now, where. I realize now, anytime I'm going to play a video game, it's because I'm doing a Let's Play or because I'm trying to do a review for it. Mm. Uh, yeah. And it kind of gets to a point where, oh, well, I got all these other games that I bought that I would love to play, but yeah, where it you know comes down to, like, I don't even know how many other games, like, hell, uh, I, I have Manhunt 1 and 2 that I bought a while ago. I haven't touched. <laughs> They've been sitting on my shelf. You know, you kind of missed the boat on that one, right? That's yeah. uh, that was a long time ago. Well, 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 this was, uh, I probably bought them like maybe like a couple of months ago where I said to myself, Hey, um, I heard that these were really good. Um, and they're going for relatively cheap. Uh, along with several other games and then boxed games. And, oh, then, yeah. you know, just, every other virtual console and every other digital download like hey that looks really cool yeah maybe every, i'd like to play that sometime and every now and then i will come across a game that i bought literally in the 90s i'm like oh this is still in the box uh i guess i'm not gonna play this <laughs> yeah it'll be like yeah. in a in a in the attic or something like that and i'm like oh yeah uh, Peter Molyneux's Black and White. I don't think I ever even installed this. <laughs> shrink wrap is. I'm like, no, clearly not, because the shrink wrap is still on the box. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I had the same thing when I moved out. I was just like, oh, look, Medal of Honor, one and two. Oh, look, Call of Duty, one and two. Oh, yeah, still in the box. <laughs> Yeah, um, I mean, thankfully, I don't have anything that's still uh, shrink-wrapped uh, or anything like that. Um, and when I say uh, a box game, I'm talking an old Nintendo game still, you know, in the original, you know, packaging box. And, <laughs> you know, it just goes to show, like, God, you're a fucking nerd. And how much did you even pay for that box? Uh, about $150. Oh, Why Lord. did you do that? Like, because I really love that game. Like, and how many different copies of that game do you own? About three. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Boy, I hope. Oh you're, man. I hope you're talking about like the original Zelda golden cartridge or something still inside its box. Uh, Zelda, yes, but a game I own three copies of is Chrono Trigger. So. Uh. <laughs> Chrono um, Trigger. I think I have. I think I might have three copies of that myself. It's yeah. funny you mention that. I was just thinking of Chrono Trigger earlier today, and I'm like, oh, man. If I found my copy of that, that would, that would give me reason to play more mobile games, which, mm -hmm. you know, I've got a 3DS, not one of the new ones, although uh, looking, at, <laughs> looking at Jeff's new 3DS, the, the new giant one with the new facial tracking and everything. Mm hmm uh, it just makes me want to go, oh, okay, well, you know what? I'll go back and play Fire Emblem again. Sure. Because mm -hmm. it's oh. so gorgeous. Speaking of which, I bought the brand new Fire Emblem. Still haven't fucking played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy that game. But yeah, Chrono Trigger is one of the, uh, God, it's got to be one of the greatest RPGs of all time. I love that game. Uh, I don't know that I ever finished it, <laughs> but uh, uh, I need to find my copy of it and see if I can dig it up somewhere. Yeah. Um, hell, um, I mentioned uh, that game as being probably my favorite video game of all time uh, on our... Oh, yeah? Yeah, um, on our uh, very last podcast, because I just knew instantly... I already know that's going to be number one. So... Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, and that was another game that took me a long time to beat, and originally when I did beat it, I had to cheat, so... Oh! Um, I... And that was another game that I've rebought like several times, because uh, um, I originally got it uh, when it was out uh, on the Super Nintendo, and then when it was later re-released uh, on Final Fantasy Chronicles for PlayStation, and then later on for the DS. And I mean, that is a game I would love to go back to. Hell, it's a game I would love to do a Let's Play series on. If I could find somebody else to actually sit down and record with me, <laughs> would be the only other problem because well, scheduling is probably the biggest difficulty you run into with doing a regular Let's Play series. It's yes. so hard to get people who are willing and able and to free up the time. I know yes. Jeff struggles with that on Rage Select all the time. Yeah, uh, and it's sad, really, because uh, like when I um, originally uh, asked you guys about uh, you know recording on um, a podcast, I. Uh, uh, you know, and all that. And you threatened me by sending a hobo to my house. Oh, that was you? Uh, hey, yes. my bad. Um, no, 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 no. Are you okay? I, mean, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> uh, he did, I don't think he, I think he just took my money and disappeared. So. Son of a bitch. Uh, one, but, uh, one day, Jordan. One day. I will find you. And I will kill you. Half before the job, half after. Come on now. Yes. Good luck. But, uh. But yeah, because uh, there was a time, uh, well, I mean, even for a little while, I guess um, my friend uh, and fellow um, um, co-host uh, uh, um, of the podcast, who's not here today only because, well, I figured he doesn't know who the hell you are. And so he <laughs> wouldn't you know, really be able to contribute uh, at all, uh, you know, since he doesn't have uh, a computer or access to the internet. But he's the only person I know who's free all the time and was just like, yeah, sure, I'll do that. Of course, I had to call him on his phone over Skype. Uh, and originally, I did do a f quite a few Let's Plays with him. And then initially, I said, okay, we can't do this anymore because I realize how incredibly stupid this is, considering you can't <laughs> see a damn thing of what I'm doing. 
Yeah, and that doesn't that doesn't really work. No, no, it really doesn't. And oh god, that was terrible. But uh, getting back on track here, let me bring back up my notes before I just start to ramble. Uh, uh, when you originally said uh, when you uh, had uh, stepped away uh, from Rage Select and when I was first initially trying to watch that original podcast, I wasn't able to get uh, YouTube uh, to work properly, but the comment section was just flooded with people talking about, man, uh, I can't believe that Jason's leaving. And, and I said, like, did Jason quit Rage Select? W w what? Because that was what every other comment was alluding to or even flat out saying. And then after I finally got it to work, after nearly having a fucking panic attack, <laughs> Uh, found out that no, he's not fucking quitting. Stop saying that shit. He's just yeah. stepping away. And well, I probably oh, wasn't okay. terribly clear about it because I wasn't really terribly sure myself. I mean, I knew I was going to be around to help with stuff every now and then, but yeah, I wasn't going to be on there, you know, every day or every other day. I just couldn't yeah. do it anymore. Yeah. Um, that and uh, Jeff had a prenup signed, so you know Jason couldn't walk fully away, or he'd lose half of what he has. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. God damn it, Jeff! I want to keep my puppet. <laughs> well, but you didn't make it. I don't care. It's mine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Jason, you can't have Archer. You've already got like what three, four dogs. No, you uh, can't have Archer. Yeah, I would totally take Jeff's dog, <laughs> but I can't. I do have three dogs already. <laughs> Yes, but uh, and you also said uh, uh, that you were getting back into writing a little bit more. Uh, would you uh, be interested in uh, sharing a little bit of uh, what you like to write uh, and what you are currently writing? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm actually doing. Um, well, uh, let's see where to start. There's one that I can't talk about. OK, uh, we'll see if it comes to fruition. It should. It's pretty big. Uh, pretty innovative. Um, uh, it would take me a while to describe it. Not too long, but, you know, a little bit. Um, and, yeah, so I can't talk too much about that. Uh, that'll be something you'll probably hear about it within the next two or three months. Uh, and then, other than that, I'm doing a lot of uh, short stories and trying to finish up a novel. Um, I've, uh, yeah, it looks like I might, maybe, hopefully, uh, be getting published uh uh, a short have a short horror story published uh, relatively soon um, in a uh, in an anthology. We'll see. Fingers crossed. It's it's looking pretty good. Um, but yeah, there's uh, got some leads. Might might have some stuff uh, available for public consumption. I know everybody's uh, you know, a lot of very kind, interested people have been asking uh, you know when they get to read my stuff, and I've got a bunch of stuff, but it's like I want to get you know, somebody to actually publish it first rather than yeah. saying, Hey, here's a, here's a short story I put up on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, let me know what you think. Yeah. I don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, working on that almost finished with uh, a novel. I write mostly horror stuff. Um, and by mostly, I mean, I write all horror stuff. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, everything I try to write always ends up getting creepy and weird. Mm. Like, Every single time. It's like I could try to write, you know, a, oh, a coming of age story about a young child in southern Minnesota. And, uh, oh, he encounters a zombie. You know, just something ridiculous like that. It's like I can't not have any uh, uh, anything without monsters or ghosts or demons or right. sex chuds or something like that. Of course, you just can't ever manage to escape the sex chuds. No, no one can. Don't even try. Yeah. Uh, well, and before we uh, begin to move on to the other large uh, questionnaire, uh, though, I think you already uh, touched on that very briefly. We have to ask, how the hell did you meet such a crazy fucker like Brian Brushwood? Oh, no, I told you that earlier. Uh, yes. Yeah, that was uh, he was. Uh, yeah, Brian Brushwood, he was uh, um, his little brother was roommates and uh, was uh my buddy's roommate in college. And so, yeah, we all ended up uh, hanging out and he and I started, you know, went to the real deal together a couple of times. And uh, yeah, we've been friends 17 years now, something like that. Good God. Yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, and fortunately, you know, with Rage Select, I actually, because Brian doesn't really do anything socially that I'm aware of. Uh, if mm-hmm. he does have any sort of social experience <laughs> these days, anyway, if he has any sort of social activity, it's uh, through work. So it's like, oh, I'm going to hang out with Brian. I get to because he's doing a scam school <laughs> or something yeah. like that. So it's like every time I hang, because he's, he's, a, he's a workhorse. He really, really is. Um, right. So it's like every time I get to see Brian, it's like, oh. Good. Uh, we're doing a hacking the system live stream uh, tonight, so um, yeah, I'll uh, get to see Brian and have some beer. <laughs> it's like he's he's managed to uh, somehow turn all of the things he loves into his career, <laughs> and so yeah, mm-hmm. it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and there can also be uh, the many numerous times that he's even been on Rage Select as well. Um, oh yeah, even the loading bar, in fact, too. Yeah. Yeah, we have them on Rage Select like uh, once a month. Yeah, which uh, is always guaranteed to be utterly chaotic. Yeah. In, in some it, form or fashion. It gets a little out of hand. It's like we go into this fugue state. Yeah. It always makes for great memeing uh, fuel, though, for the comment section. Oh, yes. yeah. Always, <laughs> new, always a new line to go with. Yeah, always something, just some ridiculous, surreal, and filthy thing that makes no sense unless you've watched it. Yes. And actually, even if you've watched the uh, the episode of Rage Select, still probably doesn't make any sense. Probably. Probably. Uh, I mean, hell, I mean, um, I know I've had a pretty hard time trying to get uh, uh, even a few of my friends into Rage Select Maybe it's because of uh, the attention span of, like, I don't want to watch a 30-minute Let's Play. It's not just a 30-minute Let's Play. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, in uh, fact, but, eh, some of the people on there, me, don't even really give a shit about the game sometimes. Like, yeah, yeah. whatever. I'm just going to make terrible jokes. Yeah. Uh, well, and moving on, uh, because um, I know, obviously, you are a huge comic book geek yep. as well. Uh, I mean, hell, I mean, um, I heard you on uh, the comic book cast as well. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, with uh, Joel. Yes, and uh, I, and so I have a few comic book-related uh, questions of my own. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not as big uh, as a comic book geek as anybody else is, but... Uh, uh, more or less certainly now uh, with how confusing, well, hell, I think comic books were probably even more confusing even back in the 90s, m- more than likely. Uh, but uh, I know what I like and I know what I don't like. So, and I was just curious to know, and I know various of these other questions have already been answered, but uh, would you say you probably prefer Marvel over DC? Uh, yeah, Absolutely. Um, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I'm, uh, and this is really uh, also not a testament, uh, at this point, we can get to that, but, uh, not a testament to the quality of, uh, DC versus Marvel. I've just always been into Marvel more than DC. Um, m- uh, a lot of that was because I started reading, uh, like G.I. Joe and Star Wars as a kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, those were just because I liked the G.I. Joe cartoon and the toys and I liked the Star Wars movies and everything back when uh, they were publishing those through Marvel. And so I decided, uh, you know, I was pretty much just sticking with those. That's that's pretty much all I read. And then a buddy of mine, uh, one of my oldest friends, gave me um, a small stack of Amazing Spider-Man comics. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Spider-Man, the guy from the electric company? Okay, yeah, Spider-Man and his amazing friends? Sure, whatever. And I was you know, I was a little kid, and then I read them, and now I am an addict, and I'm, I, as we speak, I'm looking over at my shelves, which are just filthy with every type of comic you can imagine, trades. I've got more white boxes, more long boxes, and I know what to do with, and uh, most of those, most of those are Marvel, uh, mm-hmm. just because, uh, that's, that's what I grew up with. That's what I knew. You know, some people were fortunate enough. I feel kind of cheated because I don't really know a lot about DC mythology and, and, uh, the continuity and everything. So I missed a lot of that. Um, 
Right. But uh, yeah, still trying to, to catch up and educate myself. It's uh, it's not all exclusively Marvel, but predominantly so. Right. Uh, then what would you say are probably maybe some uh, of the DC comics uh, or DC characters that you do still enjoy? Oh, well, I still uh, actually... Well, when New 52 came out, I was trying all of the different uh, uh, things that they offered. Uh, just... Over and over, uh, I would I would try every single issue of New Fifty Two. I read all of them, and one by one, I fell off of them. And so, you know, what two years later, three years later, however long it's been, uh, I have uh, drifted away. And now I'm just reading uh, Batman, Batman Eternal, and Batgirl. And I did, I stopped reading Batgirl for a while, but they did, they did that relaunch. Um, with the new creative team, the new direction, and it's uh, fantastic. But now they're doing a shake-up again pretty soon, so I'm going to start diving back in and giving uh, more stuff a try. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, how about you, Quick Kick? Um, are you uh, uh, at all involved um, in uh, any sort of comic book series or stories or anything like that? I'm getting myself slowly back into the comic book scene. Uh, I read a lot of things back when I was uh, a lot younger. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, essentials, you know, uh, essential Wolverines, essential Punishers, uh, those kind of big tomes of uh, centralized oh, big, works. The big black and white ones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I went through those, uh, but it, then I hit a phase where it's just like, I... Um, I was more into associated media like uh, the TV shows, Batman, the animated series, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the G.I. Joe TV series. Things of that sort kind of held me uh, tighter than the actual comic books themselves. But then again, where I was living at the time, there wasn't a, a huge amount of local comic shops. You know, so uh, I'm finding myself slowly getting back into it. And, uh, you know, as I, you know, Jason can attest, uh, last couple of times I come into town, uh, we went and hit up one of the local comic shops and uh, I was just kind of probing them saying, hey, you know, what, what's what's good over here? What's good over there? And I've uh, been buying a few things. Uh, nice thing about technology is I've been picking up a few on my phone as well. Yeah. I've been doing mm-hmm. some uh, uh, online searching and stuff like that. So, uh yeah, I'm, I'm working my way back in, uh, mostly through the Star Wars uh, genre, and work my way through those uh, Tales of the Jedi, I believe it's called. It's about the uh, uh, the whole beginning of the Jedi Order, things like that. Mm. But uh, mm. yeah, slowly but surely, I'm getting back at it. Nice. I mean, I still have uh, that one comic book during the very last episode uh, of the Leog uh, that you guys mentioned. That I still have on my that I still have on my Amazon wish list. I just haven't got around to purchasing, you know, to actually buying it and then trying to read it yet. Uh, but my very first comic book that I ever bought uh, when I was a kid and then became a pretty consistent series was uh, uh, was of course X Men. Sure. Uh, and that was actually during uh, uh, the story series that they did. Um, Oh god, and it's escaping me. Uh, and, and and I actually just bought a while ago uh, the full uh, booked version of that entire storyline that they did, uh, the Executioner song. Oh series. yeah, yeah, that's right. Nineties. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh god, so nineties. It's very nineties. And, um, <laughs> uh, and the funny thing is, is that well, oh god. Uh, when I was a child, and I and I'm willing to bet this could be said about probably any kid, in that when you bought a book or a comic book or were even reading a comic book you weren't really reading it you were just looking at the pictures and just kind of making up your own story because you were too <laughs> goddamn lazy to bother to read because uh, I have uh, one X-Men comic book where the art uh, I wasn't so in love with but it was at least interesting enough because uh, I remember some odd years ago I still had the comic uh, that, that actually came with one of those uh, foil cards uh, on the front of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember uh, it was very Magneto story heavy uh, about how uh, after he formed uh, the asteroid M and everything kind of went to shit, he came back and became a god and he comes back to Earth and not really to want to start any sort of shit. He was just, you know, just talking about how 
Uh, I have reached this point in my life where humanity uh, is beyond saving, but I wish to try to take as many mutants uh, far away from this place as I can and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and I had never really read it up until that point. And then I read it and I thought like, wow, a lot of this dialogue and everything is actually pretty damn good. Maybe, oh, I don't know. You should actually start paying more attention to the actual <laughs> stories of what's going on in these books. Yeah, as right. To just pretty colors, shiny things. Hmm. Um, yeah, oh, look, glow in the dark gatefold cover. <laughs> <laughs> I I never had one of those. Um, I did have one of the Spider-Man comics uh, during the Clone War, or not Clone War, uh, but during uh, the Clone Saga. Uh, as I believe it was called, oh, where uh, yeah. uh, where Peter was in jail, uh, and part of the cover was he's behind bars, and you can pull that back, and it's its own separate cover, flashy. Uh, but even at the time, uh, I remember reading it because I liked uh, the look of the Scarlet Spider. Oh, <laughs> right. Really? That was the most important thing. What's his character look, or what's his costume look like? Yes, that's awesome. I want to read that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, uh, and as I understand it, uh, was a character who did kind of get his own character sort of uh, eventually and was going to have his own series, but then they decided, nah, let's just kill him off and we'll just go back to Peter. Yeah. Also, well, all that, also, all that story development was for nothing? It started okay, guys, off kind of interesting and I got what they were doing. They were trying to do yeah. what they ended up doing later with uh one more day yes uh, the inevitable let's reboot the whole thing because he was better when he was single which let's is not have any bullshit. character e evolution or anything uh-huh yeah lazy writing lazy writing <laughs> um and i mean i'm mean, in those cases i guess i'm kind of glad that i was never as heavy into comic books as i am uh, with various other mediums when something like that happens, where they take a character who has had this overly long arc and story uh, and all this interesting development, and then they just decide, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, ah, you know, we worked really hard on it. Uh, oh, no, no, we fucked it up. Okay, never mind. <laughs> yeah. Which is kind of what the whole new 52 thing feels like to, to me. Uh, and I know there have been not a lot of people who were really happy initially about what they were hearing about what they were doing with the new 52 when it was coming. Uh, and it, well, and, and, and it, in fact, this is something I've been thinking about for the last couple of days uh, in that, you know, if you look really hard and well, really, you don't have to look that hard. Uh, Marvel and DC have certainly maybe one or the other more, has often copied uh, one person's created character and made something somewhat similar. Oh, absolutely! Out of that, I mean, Deadpool uh, is very much patterned off of like a hybrid of Spider-Man and Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, or if anything, he is just a carbon copy of Deathstroke. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Deathstroke is Slade Wilson, and Deadpool is Wade Wilson. <laughs> it's like, yes. Oh, yes. way to way to get really uh, on the nose there, Liefeld. <laughs> um, and I like how uh, there were so many people uh, who would come to the fence um, of Liefeld and say, "Well, he did create Cable and Deadpool." Yeah, but more than likely, he's not responsible for how popular you know that character has become due to probably better writers. Yeah, so. it's, you know, in Cable, they still don't really seem to know what to do with Cable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll they'll put him in there, and then he'll go away for a while, and, oh, let's try yeah. this. And, yeah, there's nothing that's really stuck. Now, Deadpool's an out-and-out -out phenomenon, you know, but mm -hmm. I think Joe Casey was responsible for most of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh you know, it's funny. Uh, I can actually, I can actually contribute to this conversation. <laughs> yes, yes, please, please, please. Uh, you, you mentioned the cable. It's funny because even, um, even going back to the uh, the essentials that I did read up on with Wolverine, when Cable would stop in to make his little appearances there, it was like, okay, he's Cable. He looks badass, and he does nothing. And he literally pops up a couple times in those stories here and there, and it's just like. Okay, he's a half bionic man. What 
<laughs> okay, he shows up and says like a line of dialogue, and that's it. Or Why he shows is he, I'm there? here to give story exposition and nothing yeah. more. Bye. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, Wolverine will say something smart ass to him. You know, maybe he'll be involved with the fight a little bit. They'll have a scrap with Sabretooth, and he's gone. Yep. You know, he'll pop up another time, repeat the same thing, and he's gone. Yep. Right. <laughs> uh, I think, at least as far to my knowledge, uh, the only time Cable has really contributed anything to any sort of a storyline, at least one that I read, was the Executioner Song series. Uh, namely because, well, everybody thought that he was involved and then he, you know, has to make himself involved and, uh, and he is the one who has to fight, uh, strife. Yep. Right. Uh, and actually fight him and sacrifice himself in order to destroy him. And, uh, you know, and it's always, uh, I mean, oh, I, I know so much could be said about Liefeld. I, the yeah, that's that, kind of a dead horse, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I never really read a Liefeld comic. Uh, I mean, the most I know about his work uh, is only about what I hear about uh, from another um, online uh, comic critic who I follow, uh, Linkara. Oh, yeah. Uh, who's done numerous videos talking about, like, why was this guy popular? Why did people like him and, 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 and how and why is it that he still even gets work? Well, reading comics at the time, whenever uh, Liefeld hit, their comics weren't drawn like that, you mm -hmm. know? And a lot of people will find fault with them now, but then... Um, it was popular. It was, it was very, very different from anything else that you would see, uh, mostly because, you know... This was uh, it was kind of uh, legendary when uh, Liefeld hit because it was right around the time McFarlane was still huge and still at Marvel and Jim Lee and everything. So you had this, you really had this, you know, renaissance of these amazing new artists doing with new styles and everything. And it was uh, it was pretty incredible. Um, yeah. Now you know you can find all sorts of fault in it. Uh, you yeah. know, people pick it apart and everything, but. Contextually, I think uh, Liefeld was actually extraordinarily important. Yeah. Uh, was it always true, though, that he never drew his characters with feet? <laughs> yeah. He, he has confessed that uh, he didn't do feet well. And, uh, and I don't know if he, if he still does. I haven't read anything new from his. But, yeah, once yeah. that got pointed out, I was like, wait a minute. They're right. <laughs> <laughs> They're, That's so he, weird. No one has any feet, and when they do, they're just these weird, pointy-looking things. Yeah. Well, they are wearing boots. You know, so boots do come to a point. So, yeah, but these fuck you, cut, I don't know. These could uh, cut somebody. <laughs> I mean, hell, I mean, um, I know uh, as a quote-unquote artist, uh, but then again, um, I haven't drawn in at least a couple of years. I'm... Um, uh, I know whenever it came to drawing um, a body to some form of a proportion is will probably come out extremely exaggerated and then trying to draw a character who's wearing boots or, or, or even shoes is often difficult. But I'm an amateur artist. He's supposed to be a professional artist. But <laughs> yeah, feet are kind of important. You know, just basic biology, right? Yes. Uh and so what would you say are probably some of your other uh, favorite uh, comic book series? I'm mean, even some that you would uh, be willing to recommend. Um, like right now or just uh, historically? Uh, historically and right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. Historically, I'm just going to look at my shelf here and uh, just go through... Uh, a couple that jump out at me, uh, DC's The New Frontier by Darwin Cook, uh, a retro look at uh, the Justice League and all of the the DC, the big DC stuff uh, throughout the years. Really, really good. It's all set during the uh, Kennedy era. Uh, oh, uh, was that the one that they did uh, the animated movie on? Yep. Yep. That's the one, yeah, which I didn't really think was bad at all. I liked it. Yeah, uh, um, I didn't really... Vision. Um, I didn't care for uh, for some of the art, uh, but I got over it um, as it went on. 
So yeah, yeah, I I really really love the art. Darwin Cook right now. He's uh, if you like his art and his uh, and his writing, he did both on here. Uh, he's doing he's at a. Uh, Adapting uh, a bunch of uh, Richard Stark novels into graphic novels. Richard Stark was a uh, kind of a pulp, hard-boiled writer, the, the Parker novels. And so he's done, I think, four of those so far into graphic novel forms. And I really, really like those. Um, there's one that uh, you can actually find. It was a short miniseries by Cullen Bunn and Brian Hurt. It's called The Damned. It was put out by Oni uh, a couple of years ago. And it's basically... Like the movie Miller's Crossing, if set in hell. <laughs> that, that one's really good. Um, the original Scott Pilgrim series, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've heard a lot about that, uh, but never read it. Uh, the only Alan Moore comic I ever read uh, was uh, Watchmen. That's the big uh, one. I... Um, and I only read it because it was a week before we were going to go see the movie. So Yeah, uh, that's a big one. That's uh, arguably the greatest comic ever produced. Uh, it is a work of genius, definitely. Um, just a couple more. Uh, Lock and Key, which wrapped up uh, not too long ago, written by Joe Hill. That is a creepy, weird, amazing story. Um uh, Gabriel Rodriguez, I think, is the uh, artist on that. Yeah. And, yeah, it's it's incredible. I read it this summer. Um, and uh, Transmetropolitan by Warren Ellis. Uh, mm-hmm. That's another favorite. Uh, Vertigo published it. Uh, that's an important one to read, I think. It's like Hunter S. Thompson in a dystopian future. Uh, that's just kind of an elevator pitch, I guess you could say. And I would be remiss not to mention uh, my man Iron Fist, <laughs> who's going to be yeah the subject of uh, one of the Netflix series oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. of the Marvel properties. Um, they actually have two trades that collect the entire Immortal Iron Fist run from a couple of years ago, and it's uh, it's really good. It uh, it redefined the character in a way he hadn't uh, been presented before without really betraying anything that came before it right right uh what and what would you say are probably some comics i'm sure this is going to be easy uh that you dislike uh, or just flat out hate um or even love maybe you know i haven't uh, really found anything that i like lately that I dislike or hate. I just, uh, there's so many good comics right now. I will, I'll read, you know, read something and I'm like, Oh, I like that, but I didn't love it. So I'm not going to keep reading it because I've got a lot of stuff eating into my wallet that I just absolutely love. Uh, one of them that I just discovered that I'm just crazy about the five issue limited series. It's only two issues in it's called lady killer. And it's, uh, by, uh, uh, a woman named uh, Joelle Jones, and it's about this um, this paid assassin in the fifties, in this kind of idyllic Aussie and Harriet uh, type, uh, you know, atomic family fifties. Uh, uh, but uh, she's a housewife, <laughs> and you know, always uh, making a meatloaf, and you know, in the Rotary Club, and taking care of the kids and everything. But she's a badass assassin. Nice. <laughs> and, nice. It's, uh, I'm really, really liking it. Very nice. Um, there were only a, a couple of comic books, uh, that I was, uh, that I was interested uh, in reading, uh, for probably the last year or so. But even then, um, I wasn't, uh, really keeping up because, you know, cause I had a few other things uh, that I was probably m- more interested in. And that was, uh. Uh, the relaunch of the Ninja Turtle series that they did. Oh, I heard and, that was very good. I didn't get a chance to check it out, but I heard it was great. Uh, it was. Um, I believe it's still ongoing. Uh, and I think I was, so, yeah. Um, and I was just so surprised because basically what they did was they took uh, both of the original uh, graphic novels uh, and then uh, uh, just about everything else from the cartoon series and just combined it and still kept it... Uh, fairly dark, uh, but fairly light uh, at the same time, but not too light, you know, to the point where everything was just overly silly and, oh, we're not really fighting. We're, yeah. So, 
Uh, and then there was also uh, the relaunch uh, of Ghost Rider. Yep, that was fantastic. Which... Uh, the one with the hot rod. Yeah, with the car. Yeah, it was really yeah. good. I uh, I read up to about uh, when the first story ended. Uh, up to about story or, or, or book six or seven. Um, had a bit of a falling off, uh, mostly because uh, when they started doing uh, the next story, I really was not liking uh, the art style that they were using. And Oh, you didn't uh, like that, yeah, because that's very distinctive. If you don't like that, uh, there's really not much can be said. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, like when I picked up and read uh, one of the latest books uh, for Ghost Rider, I was especially disappointed to find out that, oh... He's not the actual ghost writer. He's just possessed by a random uh, murderous evil spirit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they've, they've polluted the waters with the whole spirit of vengeance thing for so long since the yeah. 90s. It's, or, or, God, even since he was created in the 70s. It's just, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. Uh, and then the only other comic I have been kind of, and, and at least trying uh, to keep up with, I, and, and actually when I was first reading uh, the Ghost Rider uh, relaunch, that was even hard uh, to try to keep up with. I, 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 you know, mainly just trying to remind myself, like, oh, uh, like once a month. Well, have they released a new one yet? I don't know, because the only other comic book shop that I go to, well, I mean, comic shop slash uh, video game uh, music and movie store uh, that I go to. Uh, at least they, you know, do keep up with a lot of uh, the other various different comics uh, as well as old comics. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, but that was just very hard to try to keep up with. And then all the alternate stupid covers that they would have as well as like, I don't want the freaking cover for this. It's ridiculous. And it's hideous. And, uh, that, uh, that was a little difficult to keep up with, but also I was reading, uh, the Nightcrawler story that they were doing. Uh, well. like the recent one that was, uh, written by Chris Claremont. Uh, I have one of the latest books. Uh, yeah. Claremont. Yeah. Uh, I read a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah. Claremont um, is the, uh, He's the guy who really defined the X-Men as we know it. Mm. Uh, there's also a giant story arc going on right now. Like, the death of Wolverine. And, of course, uh, I'm thinking, they're not really going to kill him off permanently. I'm, I'm <laughs> very sure. Uh, he's uh, No, not permanently. He makes too much money for them. But, uh, yeah. yeah, they'll... He's... He's been dead for a few months, and Marvel is saying that they'll keep him dead for a couple of years, which I think is... Bullshit. A, well, I think it's a great choice if they're going to stick with it. We'll see. Yeah, well, um, it would be interesting if they did uh, actually stick to their guns uh, and kept him dead. Uh, I mean, I mean, and, I mean, you know, I mean, not obviously uh, forever because hell, Wolverine is my favorite freaking character. Ah, so. okay, yeah. Oh uh, well, uh, you're not. <laughs> you are far from the only person to ever say that. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Duh. Yeah. It's freaking Wolverine. It's, uh, I really, really, die. there's just, there's too much, uh, Wolverine love out there. So he'll be back. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's questioning that, but yeah, hopefully yeah. they'll do it right and, you know, reinvigorate the character. Yeah. Well, um, I understand, uh, the old Logan series that they did, uh, was actually pretty interesting. It was all right. Yeah. Um, I didn't love it, but I thought it was pretty good. It was cool. It was, uh. It, it answered the question, you know, the decades-old question about his childhood and everything that a lot of people had. Yeah, uh, when I first heard about that, um, I thought that was interesting. Uh, but then when I really started to hear about it and kind of learned about it, I thought, like, I don't really think I want to know about Wolverine's childhood. You know, because there was still a part of me uh, that later on thought that sometimes it's better for a character who, you know, has already been like long uh, established that by the time you do give them a backstory, it's going to be something that you're going to say, you probably shouldn't have told us that. <laughs> yeah. You it's, know, sort of thing. Some things are, you know, you don't have to fill in all of the gaps. Yeah. It's like, well, um, I know uh, it's a lot like for some people when uh, uh, for the Halloween remake, they gave uh, 
Michael Myers a huge backstory, and there were a lot of people like, oh. Yeah, that was kind of the antithesis of the character. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's uh, that went against everything that uh, John Carpenter did. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, getting back on track. Uh, br- 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 what's next? What's next? Uh, okay, so uh, still relating to comic books. Uh, who would you be able to say is probably your favorite comic book artist or uh, or author? Mm, that's tough. Um, uh, as far as artist goes, uh, I really do like the Darwin Cook stuff quite a bit. It's got this uh, very retro vibe to it that's uh, fitting for his entire line of work, really, everything that he's done. Uh, so, yeah, not... Ask me again tomorrow, and it might be different. But yeah, I like Darwin Cook's art quite a bit. As far as writing goes, uh, that's uh, that's a little bit of a tougher one. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, all of my uh, favorites have, you know, stuff that I don't really connect with. Uh, sometimes, um, mm-hmm. you know, Grant Morrison's written some brilliant stuff, and then he's written some other stuff that just. Didn't yeah. do it for me. Same with Warren Ellis. Same with Alan Moore. Uh, you know, those are all the big names. Um, you know, right now, let's go ahead and just say Matt Fraction. I think he's doing some really good stuff with, like, sex criminals. And I thought he wrote a, a great run on Iron Man not too long ago. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's an exceptionally talented guy. And he's about to wrap up his... Uh, uh, the greatest Hawkeye run that has ever been written. Oh, um, is that the one where it's uh, just Hawkeye when he's not being Hawkeye? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I remember uh, uh, you guys uh, were talking about that one, uh, especially at great length. Yeah. Yeah, just a fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, uh, series that's uh, really just kind of shows him as a person. Yeah. Um, uh, the only other thing uh, that I have to add on that was that, um, a while ago, and I don't even remember where I heard about this, but, uh, the astonishing, uh, um, X-Men series, or, or, or rather how I saw it initially was when it became, um, a full motion comic video. Oh, right. Yeah. For a little while. Uh, and I had seen probably one other motion comic, and I certainly know why, like, n- not a lot of people really like them, uh, in that it's a comic book that has, you know, some very little motion to it, but it has, you know, the voice acting and blah, 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 which is interesting, but at the same time, uh, you wonder, like, why didn't you just get full motion animation? For, for this yeah it's uh that uh, motion comic thing is very distracting for me just yeah. the style uh just the style of it is hard for me to grasp you know it's yeah. i just i can't get around it it's a little too distracting yeah and there are a ton of them too for just about anything oh I yeah think. absolutely yeah it's uh, there are quite a few of them i think the the uh, the format has died out a little bit, you know, it's, yeah. uh, I, I don't, uh, I, I don't know. You don't see it as much anymore because I think, I think it kind of, <laughs> a lot of people found it off putting cause it was just so strange. You know, it's, uh, it, yeah. it really was almost kind of a step backwards, uh, for animation, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And it would probably also be the kind of thing that would make you think like, you know, if I wanted to read a comic book, I just read a comic book. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, that's become but, a big trend in uh, video games right now as well. And I know that's been a, yeah, a big bane yeah. of uh, Jeff's on oh, no, Rage Select is when uh, it's a cutscene and motion comic. It's yeah. cutscene and motion comic. Oh, well, <laughs> right. look at that. They didn't even color it in. How about that? They put the storyboards in the game for us. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, for some of those things, uh, I mean, when they happen, um, I can at least appreciate uh, the art style. But when you're someone like Jeff, where you play games every single day, you probably see that shit a lot. Yeah. And so you probably get really tired of it. Yep. So, uh, but I think what really helped uh, uh, 
more or less with Astonishing X-Men so much so that I would actually like to buy the series of this was Joss Whedon's writing for it, especially. It's really good. Uh, the ending, uh, I don't know, the last uh, the last frame of it doesn't really, or not the last frame, but the last uh, story arc doesn't really do it for me. Uh, but mm -hmm. uh, everything else in there, you know, what he does with uh, the Danger Room and mm -hmm. um, uh, with... Uh, Oh, no, wait, that's Grant Morrison, uh, the one I was about to say. But yeah, with the Danger Room and everything. It's just, yeah, really good stuff. And he, I think he gets it, you know? he, I yeah. think he understands. Yeah. Uh, I would love it uh, if and when Marvel is able to get a, the X-Men movie property back. Uh, yeah. To, you know, maybe cover, um, I, yeah, I mean, just a lot more of those storylines. I know. Such. That would be, that would be fantastic to see what they would do with it, but I don't see Fox getting rid of it anytime soon. Cause it's a huge yeah. moneymaker for them. Yeah. Uh, and thankfully, I mean, they have been able to redeem it lately. Um, I did, uh, um, a while ago, finally get my hands on watching, uh, the days of future past. Oh, it's great. Yeah. It's very uh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I actually liked, uh, how at the end there are real, uh, how basically they were just rebooting the entire movie series. So it's like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, 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 hey, well, at least this way we can forget all about uh, Last Stand. So, which when I originally saw Last Stand, I did love it. Though there was, uh, I remember a specific part uh, in the movie theater when I thought, wait, Juggernaut's not a mutant. And then <laughs> eventually, when my brain woke up. You know, probably like a couple of years later, I thought, you know what? That movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I'm glad you came to that realization. And we're able to grow as a person. <laughs> no, man. No, it, it was awesome. No, he's the juggernaut, bitch. No, nope. no, no, no. I just it was remember terrible. Little... Oh, yeah. And you got to love they put them all in the Matrix uh, black leather. For the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just looking at it and just watch that final lineup of X-Men. It's like. Oh, good. Oh, there's Neo. Oh, look, yeah. there's Morpheus. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and hey, uh, Sentinel Tease. Oh, no, Um, it was the Danger Room. Oh, oh that was so annoying. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, there were a lot of things about that movie. I, and, and, and hell, um, I know I was talking to you uh, about this over Twitter, uh, where I forget exactly what it was I asked, uh, where, where, where like, uh, what was worse, uh, the betrayal um, of what they did uh, to Cyclops or uh, um, or to some other character? Um, um, I think it was either what they did to Rogue um, or what they did uh, to Cyclops. It's hard to say because so many uh, characters got sidelined in that. But I think for me, yeah. the Cyclops one was really, really frustrating. Uh, yeah. They just I mean, they killed him off screen. Yeah. It was just insulting. Well, and well, well. I mean, not only that they killed him off screen, but they had it so that, oh, well, he's in a deep, dark mound of depression, so he's not the leader anymore. Like he would never fucking do that. That's not his character. <laughs> yeah. Hell, at the end of two, after losing Gene, he was still there. He was still, you know, you know, he was still by Xavier's side. Yeah. So. It's uh, it, 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 the whole thing was just a mess. It's yeah. I think everybody agrees. It's like okay, let's just move past that and yeah, try to ignore it. Yeah, uh, though from what I heard, uh, and I actually heard this during uh, one of the let's plays that you were on, that they are, I guess, changing up uh, the cast. Yeah, yeah, they're recasting. Um, and I can't remember all the names, but they're recasting Jean Grey, Cyclops, and Storm. I do know who uh, Jean Grey is, and it's uh, it's going to be uh, the girl that plays Sansa uh, in uh, Game of Thrones, if you've seen that. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which one is Sansa? Uh, uh, the uh, She's the red-headed uh, daughter of uh, uh, the Starks. Mm -hmm. uh, is she the one who is married to Joffrey, or is she the one... Uh, who's a tomboy? Uh, Mary, Mary to Joffrey, yes. Ugh. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't See, know. I haven't really seen her do anything else, so... Yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to it, but, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a great storyline with the Age of Apocalypse and everything. I'm, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. really uh, looking forward to that. 
uh, which I've heard a lot about. Um, and again, um, I have the, uh, I, um, I have that comic book series um, on my wish list. Uh, I just haven't read it, or or, or or even bought it, yet. But yeah, um, Apocalypse. Uh, he's another one of those giant characters, uh, at least from uh, the X Men uh, universe. Uh, I anyway, I uh, I know probably the the only moreover bigger character of the Marvel universe is Galactus. So, uh, yeah, he's uh, you know, he's a. Uh, Really huge one who is they the way they've written him. He's kind of threaded his way throughout uh, uh, Marvel history in an interesting way. A lot of that's retconned, and a lot of people don't like it. Man, I get it. But uh, yeah, I, I just think he's fascinating. He's this ancient yeah. e Egyptian, basically a deity. Yes. Uh, well, uh, as I understand it, uh, from one of the uh, like origin uh, sort of um, uh, uh, one of the origin explanations that somebody gave online was that he's part alien and part human uh, that's um, bonded. Eh, yeah, together. yeah, yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's exactly correct, but as far as I yeah. recall, I'm like, yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah, because he, he got some of the some of his power from the Celestials. Yeah. Uh, and actually, um, another comic book uh, that I read only because I heard uh, you guys talking about it was the X-Force um, Apocalypse Solution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was fantastic. It was a little impenetrable, yeah. though, because uh, it's tough to really... Um, it's so dense. You know, it's so dense with Marvel history uh, that yeah, it's, a bit. it's a really bit, yeah. kind of difficult to navigate if you don't have... If you already don't have an understanding of some of those past storylines. Yeah. Uh, the only character who was a bit of a mystery, uh, but you end up, you know, just instantly, uh, liking him, uh, was the Phantom X character, yeah. if I'm pronouncing his name properly. Yeah, yeah. He's an interesting guy. I don't know if they ever, uh, uh I know they did, uh, something, they did something with him recently, uh, where he betrayed them or something like that. I don't know how how well that was handled. I, I had dropped the book by then, but uh, yeah, he's, he's kind of a neat character. I think that was yeah. a Grant Morrison creation, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Uh, and I know uh, Mr. Grant Morrison has had a lot of missteps with a lot of his comic books. The only one I really know about, of course, is uh, the Batman R.I.P. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, uh, wow, just... Yeah, wow. <laughs> he went really? to some weird. He went to some weird places with that. Uh, not all of them good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and two other comic books uh, that I will mention uh, as I've read was, uh, uh, I mean, I do consider myself um, a Ghost Rider fan. Sure. Uh, so when I picked up uh, this book, uh, this was actually a very interesting read, and that was uh, the Trail of Tears story. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Which uh, was a very interesting take in that, hey, it's Ghost Rider in a Western setting. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and it was just such a very good story. Some of the dialogue uh, was a little hard to read. Uh, and that's only because, well, everybody does have a very thick Southern accent. And so a lot of that uh, is very heavy in there. Uh, yeah. But all in all... Uh, it was a very good uh, and very dark story uh, in the art, especially. It was very, very good. Yeah, that was Garth Ennis, um, and uh, that was uh, he. He did a lot of uh, interesting stuff, but uh, for some reason, even he wasn't able to make uh, uh, Ghost Rider a triple A title. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, I thought he had some good ideas, but they're still kind of uh, still kind of uh, floundering. Yeah, uh, and 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 plus, I mean, it was you know. It especially, uh, I mean, the look itself just works so well. I mean, uh, Ghost Rider on a horse. Yeah, of course that fucking works, and that looks great. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Especially. Well, that's, I mean, the original Ghost Rider uh, was uh, like an old uh, spectral cowboy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. and uh, they've tied those together uh, with, uh, Johnny Blaze and so forth. But, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a Western character. It was a Marvel Western character. And this was a nice way to kind of bridge the gap there. Yeah. Uh, and then of course there was, uh, the Marvel, uh, well, uh, there was Marvel zombies and there was, uh, the Marvel civil war. Yes. Uh, 
And I did enjoy uh, the Marvel Zombie series. Uh, I don't know if it's still going on. Or they keep they bringing it. it back. I thought they ran it into the ground, but it's like every time I turn around, it's like, oh, there's let's bring Marvel Zombies back. They're doing it again for the big Secret Wars crossover, and I'm just kind of tired of it. It's like, okay, we're 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 done. They're doing. <laughs> Uh, they're doing another Secret Wars. Yeah, it's the big thing. It's coming up in a couple of months. It's gonna really, really uh, just kind of uh, upend everything in the Marvel universe. Uh, and it's it's kind of a way for them to do their own New Fifty Two. Oh Jesus! It's a, you, you know, I mean, I'm mean, and obviously, yes, uh, this does become a trend in really any medium, really. Uh, is that you do a reboot and you retell a story that you've already told before, or you do um, a particular series that you've already done before. It's like, really? What? Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to do this slightly different. It's the same story. What? <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It's, Whatever. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of times when they do the reboots, they just, they don't stick the landing and it ends up becoming more of a mess uh, than, what they actually were trying to <laughs> were trying to eliminate, you know? Yeah. Um. And as an and as a quote unquote writer, I can understand that because we are all uh, perfectionists in our own way. Yeah. But and at the same time, you're not even going back to fix your own mistakes. You're going back to fix what you vi view as the mistakes of sometimes decades other of other writers. Yeah. I uh, and for me, that would be like. Well, I would feel like I was insulting that writer by saying, oh, well, your work is not as good as mine, blah, 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 blah. Uh, also, like, I would think, like, as a creator, like, you just need to know when to step away and be like, well, let's just leave that as it is, you know. Um, but also, well, I, 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 I nearly uh, skipped over it. Um, what are your thoughts on the Marvel Civil War? Um, I do think it's interesting uh, I would say I don't think certain characters would have done uh, the things that they did. Uh, but at the same time, like, well, their character is probably different than you know them, you know, from the movies to the comic book. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, it was interesting. You had I'm curious to see how they're going to pull it off uh, mm -hmm. in the. Uh, in the movies, uh, I liked it uh, overall. It did have yeah. a lot of uh, characterizations and a lot of characters acting uh, against what they would usually do. You know, they really a lot of. Uh, I think they failed to truly make us see both sides of the argument, and I think most people ended up uh, siding with Captain America. And I saw what the writers were trying to do, uh, but I don't think they quite stuck the landing. Um, because everyone just ended up thinking, well, for some reason, he's uh, Tony Stark's acting like a fascist maniac, <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. it uh, it just didn't make a lot of sense. Uh, you could kind of see what they were going for, so it didn't it didn't completely ruin uh, the show or the uh, the book uh, by any means. But you had a couple of things that you had to get past, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, um, before we uh, move on here, um. A uh, quick kick. Uh, was there anything uh, uh, that you wanted to add, uh, real quick, um, before you have to go? Or uh, no, uh, I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just hop on uh, real quick and say uh, you mentioned earlier characters staying dead, like Wolverine. Uh, since we brought up Captain America, I would say if that was one character that needed to stay dead for a while, it was uh, Captain America. After that whole Civil War thing, you know, especially if you're going to try to go that far out of your way to make that big of a statement <coughs> with it, you know keeping him dead would have furthered that you know yeah they had him dead for a little while but uh you know for the story that he's always followed being the man at a time you know and being this kind of big symbolic symbol of america you know if any character needed to stay dead for a while it would have been captain america so if they brought him back you know after something like civil war then i don't think wolverine's gonna stay dead for very long either it didn't yeah. take long no, and they even had the Punisher was dressing up as Captain America for a while. How weird was that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, uh, no, you can uh, you can go ahead and move on. That's uh, what I had to say on that. Okay, quick kick. Uh, well, um, 
Next up was, uh, oh, well, I think we've kind of already touched on these a little bit, uh, uh, except for one. Uh, what would you say are your thoughts on Frank Miller uh, as an artist and as a writer? <laughs> uh, he's contributed a lot, <laughs> a lot of good things to comics. Uh, you know, since, also since a lot of bad things. Uh, yeah, yeah. Since, uh, you know, his earlier career was uh, uh, when he was really taking off was, I think, when he was doing Daredevil. And, of course, you know, right up there with Watchmen is The Dark Knight Returns. Mm-hmm. which really helped define Batman going forward. Um, you know, they've kind of shifted away from that, but you can still see his fingerprints all over what they've, uh, what they're doing now. And, uh, you know, then you had Sin City, which was interesting, but almost like a tug in cheek representation of crime noir. Um, yeah. And then he's done some other stuff lately that was uh, really just inexplicably bad. <laughs> and uh it's i really have no it's, you read some of the stuff and you're like wow what uh what was going on in your head when you decided this would be a good idea yeah uh like i saw um or i read part of his uh holy terror book yeah um and i you know can up okay wow this art looks like dog shit and the dialogue is just as repetitive as it usually is and it's like oh Wow. Well, yeah. I wonder. Uh, I wonder, and I bet that uh, Linkara at some point is going to be reviewing this on his show. <laughs> uh, and sure enough, he did. And oh yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that out. Uh, I know it was uh, that Holy Terror was basically something that he wrote in DC. As I understand it, I could be wrong about this, but as I understand it, DC, uh, it was supposed to be a Batman story. He, uh, DC looked yes. at it and said, uh, "This is racist." <laughs> so we're not going to publish this. And if you read the story, it very much looks like he just filed the serial number off of uh, off of Batman and Catwoman and so forth. Yeah. And said, well, it's, no, it's an original work, you know, but it's clearly so, uh, meant to be Batman. Yeah. Uh, he's called the Fixer now. Okay. And... Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't read the whole thing. I read bits and pieces, and I was like, yeah, yeah this is a train wreck. Yeah, well, and also, well, I mean, how, I mean, um, I didn't read the whole thing either. Um, I just uh, went through um, about a couple of pages, uh, and then uh, Linkar's uh, review for it, which, you know, just covers uh, the whole thing uh, from beginning to end, um, as a lot of his uh, comic book reviews do. Uh, yeah, <sighs> dear... Dear fucking God. Um, and like, anyway, I understand what the original concept was meant to be, that it was, you know, sort of a play up on those old uh, 50s and 60s uh, kind of, I don't want to say exploitation comic books, but kind of how, uh, shit, I don't even know how to properly explain it. <laughs> uh, but it was meant to be, you know, kind of a send up, uh, of that with a kind of modern day Batman. Uh, but I guess apparently after, you know, nine 11 happened at the time and Frank was writing it and he, his mind was very backwards and obviously very angry and just said, you know what? Fuck Muslims and fuck anybody who is a Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you might want to just sit down and think about that before you move forward next time. Otherwise, you're going to end up sounding like an asshole. Yeah. Uh, and, and hell, uh, the opening line of the comic uh, has a quote uh, from Muhammad that, that says, <coughs> and I quote, If you meet the infidel, kill the infidel. Uh, and it's like, I'm pretty sure Muhammad never said that but hey <laughs> I, I am not know? familiar with the scripture myself uh <laughs> but uh yeah if you're gonna go just declare your own jihad on something you might want to make sure that you get your facts right yeah i uh, i and uh, before we move on from there uh what uh, what were your initial thoughts uh, with the first uh, 52, um, or 52 even now? Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I think it was uh, 
In my opinion, they had a lot of uh, opportunities, but uh, I hear that there was a lot of uh, editorial interference that kept uh, some things from being as good as they should have been. They did have a mass exodus of creators, and I think that was pretty telling uh, for what happened there. So, yeah, right now, it's I, I don't know. I haven't gone back and tried anything after I fell off. Uh, the only thing I've picked back up is... Um, Batgirl, I hear Justice League is really good. Um, I hear Flash is cool. We need to check that out. So, yeah, I should go back and really dive back into it and see if there's anything that's that I'm liking now. But overall, I just kind of thought, well, it was, uh, it was a good idea, but it was a missed opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as I understand it, there were some stories that were just retreading and then they were taking things uh, with their characters and having them do and say things as... Why would you do that? And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. uh, like I understand uh, the Red Hood and the Outlaws story, uh, which it was pretty it bad. Started, it was not uh, good. <laughs> yeah, uh, it certainly really didn't look that good either. Uh, more especially because of what they did with Starfire, where she's oh, I'll sleep with anybody. Just hypersexualized. Yeah, that that yeah. was. Not the best idea, especially if it's a character who has uh, gained a lot of young female friend, or fans in the Teen Titans cartoon, and now you're mm-hmm. going to turn her into some alien sex pot. It's like, oh, come on, guys. Did you, you didn't think about this at all, did you? Yeah. Well, and like, it was like, not only is she a sex pot, but she's a freaking... Hold on. Yeah, I'm here. Have you been out of here at all today? I have. I haven't seen you. Yeah, you have. I haven't. Bye. Bye. Ah, oh, Jesus. And you've just had the great pleasure of meeting my grandmother. Quite all right. <laughs> uh, thank God for editing. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, uh, I I'm actually going to have to run here pretty quick, uh, if that's all okay. right. Okay, um, I'll try to keep the last bit of this quick. Uh, uh, okay, so comic books, uh, video games. Uh, is there anything else uh, that you would want to recommend um i did want to have a brief conversation about uh the movie remake thing but eh, we can scrap that that's fine uh is there anything else that you would like to recommend be it video game or comic book for anybody uh you know um a lot of uh, good video games are finally starting to come out for the current generation i like far cry 4 quite a bit if you like far cry 3 it's uh, then you'll like far cry 4 it's you know great voice acting fun action a huge sprawling map uh dragon age inquisition uh i also like that a lot uh, if you are um not even necessarily a fan of the other dragon age games because i'm not uh but this was a, a awesome rpg i thought uh, really cinematic with some uh excellent villains and again great voice acting uh those are two that's uh, really top notch stay away from the order it's a waste of money the order 1866 a tremendous waste of money uh um, have you guys uh, played a little bit uh more of that uh, or just what you uh, recorded oh jeff jeff finished it yeah jeff finishes oh, oh, wow. most of the games he had he really had didn't have much good to say about it um Ouch. and it was uh yeah it's all, a lot of cut scenes uh a lot of uh quick time events a lot of slowly walking around just looking at things uh mm. it's pretty ridiculous i'm pretty glad then that i really wasn't all that hyped or was like uh yeah that's a game Okay, why should I care? I liked the design. Uh, the The story is uh, really Man. interesting, and oh, okay. uh, the uh, I thought it was gorgeous. You know, the it really is gorgeous to look at. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's just really not much of a game there. Mm. Oh, that's always pretty disappointing. Uh, well, all right then. Um, I guess we will cut this short. Uh, everybody. Uh, uh, shit! I'm, bo- I'm 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 blanking on my own uh, on my own podcast. Editing, it's okay. Yes, <laughs> don't worry about. Finest, uh, everybody. Uh, this was uh, the other people podcast. Uh, as usual, I'm quick kick. Uh, thanks for uh, joining in and uh and and helping out. I always appreciate it. Absolutely, outstanding. Uh, yes, had a great time. Thanks for having me. Good. Uh, I, I, I'm just so glad uh that I was able to do this with you. I. Uh, and, uh, and until next time, everybody, I hope that you've enjoyed, and we will see you around. Bye! Let me take a minute and tell you my plan. Let me take a minute.